Hi, welcome to the small shed. Today I'm going to have a look at this little honing setup that I did, do a couple of improvements and have a look at the Veritas honing guide I'd bought. See you in a minute. So I've had a chance to have a, a play with the Veritas Honing Guide. I've sharpened a chisel with it, which is the extent of my knowledge. So I'm not doing any sort of in-depth review. It's just merely some observations I've got and have a quick look at how it works. Um, and I've also used the little sharpening station and that's thrown up a couple of things that I want to address. So we'll start with those and then we'll get on to the Honing Guide afterwards. So I've used the honing guide a couple of days ago on the chisel. As I suspected, um, when I get over to the side, you can't use it because of these sloping rails getting in the way. It didn't stop me using it because I was just using the left hand side of the, the stone to do the work. But it's not really ideal, so I've got two options. I could cut that away scallop it out or I could just accept the fact that when I'm using it I just pull the stones out and use them loose on the bench which is what I ended up doing and what at the moment I think I'll continue to do. It means I've got to have somewhere to put this um, when I've finished and it because there's water floating around and with the uh, stuff that you use as a fluid and things like that I, it, really it needs to be wiped down and put away nicely there's dust drops down onto this from above through the holes in the bench so I'm going to make a small box in MDF just to hold the pieces there and the instructions nothing fancy nothing clever just a 9mm MDF with a little hinged lid so I can just put the guide away when I don't want it because there are occasions when I'll probably be using the stones just to sharpen a blade on something I won't necessarily need the honing guide now there are a couple of things that the shed has provided me with um, that's the ability to walk away and leave stuff half finished without having to clear up all the time. It's given me the room to be able to do things. But also now we've got the benches in and all the tools that you that help, it's enabled me to make a box that all the pieces are square, they're all the right size, they all fit together and without any amount of sanding or anything it means I can glue this thing up and it's done and that is the one thing I, I know there isn't a view that doing things by hand is better and all that but it takes years to get that skill and my problem always was being able to make two of the same thing exactly the same and that's what you can do with the toys and that has meant I've done this in 10 minutes or so. Just glue it up now. I've got some little hinges that I have had in the past for something else. I'll just basically stick one on the back, stick the lid on it like that, and then that will give me the, the hinging lid. And I've got my little box built. Very easy, very quick. It just helps having the room and the setup to do it. And I think the more that you get the toys, the easier it becomes to produce something quickly and worry about the, the craft side of it later for things that are important and that matter um, or that you enjoy more like the little push stick I did the other day there was more handwork in that but it was something that was more tactile and beautiful this is functional
Right, so I've made up a little box. I'm going to do a removable lid rather than a hinge lid, I've decided. So I've done a, a layer inside that just slots it in. While that's gluing up, we'll take a look at the guide, which I've now housed in there with little inserts to keep it in the right place. Essentially, there are two parts to the kit. Just get that out of the way. There's a guide which you just slide onto the front rail of the guide uh, machine and there's a, a little line on there and you set that to whatever chisel width you're, or blade you're going to sharpen. In this instance it's 18mm which is 3 quarters ish. So I set it about there, tighten that up that sets your angle and I'm working on 25 degrees I don't know enough about what I'm doing really but I'm working on an average sort of level so I've set it at 25 degrees you slacken off these two side bolts nuts and then you basically put the chisel blade through until it reaches that stop that you've set and then you just tighten up the nuts the knurled nuts and that should leave the blade in exactly the right place to get the 25 degree angle. Then you undo that guide piece, slide it off, and now that roller will set you an angle which is set at 25 degrees. You set the little pin on the end there to 12 o'clock come back to that in a minute so that pointing upwards is at 12 o'clock and then essentially <coughs> it's fairly simple you use whatever stones you're using and you just roll this thing back and forth and it's going to give you the right angle and to somebody that's a complete klutz like me that's ideal I mean I watch Paul Sellers and he gets one and he just goes like that He's been doing it for 50 years and it'll be 25 degrees, I'm sure. If I did it, it would be round because I'd be doing that sort of thing. So, for somebody that is not well versed, it, this is ideal. Now, just as a starter, I've just grabbed two chisels out of the tool bag. These are used more for opening tins than anything. You can see how good this chisel is in that it's actually quite nice just to stroke my hand with it's as blunt as you could get there is just nothing on that at all there's no way you'd even hurt yourself with it so we'll give it a go and see what happens the only thing i've found that i'm not i won't say i'm not sure about or not happy about that i don't think is particularly brilliant is that of course while you're rolling the roller across like these diamond stones it's actually making a bit of a mess of the roller itself but I'm not sure whether there's a way around that at all or not. I may be doing it wrong, I don't know. But that seems to be the only downside that I've found so far anyway. But then I just start at the highest, or the lowest grit, the lowest number on the grits. Squirt some of this on it. Turn it round on the roller. And essentially that's all you're doing until you get a good flat um, line all the way across. It's also wise before you even start, and I'll just get the blade out a minute, just to start with any new chisel or anything to actually run the back through so that you've got a dead flat back down towards the bottom end. Because again, if you're getting to a point at the end, it's no good if the back of it is going in all directions and at all angles. So I'll quickly do that, then I'm just going to run up through these, and rather than bore you with watching my inept work, um, I'll come back to you when it's done, see roughly how long it took, bearing in mind how bad this was in the first place, and give you some idea of how well it decent an edge you can get on a chisel. Now I mentioned the little 12 o'clock on that um, 
dial on the side you then move it to I think it's nine o'clock I'll check in a second when you want the secondary bevel that just alters that roller very slightly in angle and it puts you a very slight secondary bevel on the very front of the blade which will bring you that last bit of sharpness and you can see on that there's a second well you probably can't but there is a separate line appeared along that now where that secondary bevel is kicked in now I've spent what quarter of an hour at most on what was a particularly poorly chisel I flattened the back I've done a job on the front with the, the four stones and I've just honed it with the um, compound as well I've now got a chisel that will happily take chunks out of I know this is MDF and hardwoods are harder and all this sort of thing but to give an indication you saw how soft it was before uh, I could rub it on my hand I wouldn't dare put it anywhere near my hand now you see folks shaving with them I'm not going to start doing that but it has put a particularly good edge on it and really that's all I needed I wanted something that an idiot like me could use and get started and be able to sharpen his tools and that was one of the new year resolutions it's something I've managed to achieve if you like in terms of getting the gear for it we've made the sharpening station which has made it easy to do because this sits just underneath the bench now and by the time this is sorted itself out a bit with letting glue properly dry and one or two other things um, I've now got the honing guide, I've just cleaned that off, that fits into the little box there, as does the other piece, which I've already managed to lose, they fit in there, lid on, and then we can just slide it back into position underneath ready for the next time and maybe we'll start on refurbishing and sharpening planes next hope the video was of interest look forward to seeing you next week and we'll be either sharpening or doing something different making something hopefully see you then bye